Let's analyze the Santa rally and see if it's real. Hey, what's up traders? First of all, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. This will be the last video of the year, which is crazy. As always, time flies. At some point early next year, I'll do a breakdown of how my trading systems performed for the year. I like to be transparent like that at the end of each year. So make sure to jump on my mailing list if you're curious about how my trading went this year. Spoiler alert, it went pretty well, at least until uh, this day, <laughs> which gave back a bit of profit in my momentum systems, my trend following systems, but hey, that happens. So what do I have on my chart for you guys today? This is a, it's called a Christmas performance indicator, but it's technically any time period performance analysis indicator. It's telling me the average rate of return for a date period. So if we go back to the NASDAQ, because that seems to have more price data. Go back to the NASDAQ index. We have 39 years of data to analyze. And according to this back test, this year hasn't finished yet because the date range by default is 1st of December to 31st of December. This script is averaging the rate of change or rate of return for that time period over 39 years. So we have a 56% chance of that time period ending positively, chance of gain. And this is the average return for that time period. So we've all heard of seasonality in the markets. A lot of traders will just claim that certain times of the year are generally a positive pattern, price performance. Uh, but we don't really know that unless we analyze it. So this is one way to go about that. That's the purpose of this script. It just so happens that it's Christmas. So I chose Christmas, uh, the Christmas December time period to analyze. But this script will work on any um, time window throughout the year if you're curious about other seasonality time periods. Um, so it's a pretty interesting little script. I just thought I'd throw something together to wind up the year. And why not analyze the Santa rally, as it's called? So you can change the time period here. So I could change this to January, for example. And now you can see that we have a 2% average gain over 40 years of data and a 67% chance of that month ending positively on the NASDAQ, um, which I thought was quite interesting. I didn't expect that to be such a positive month, uh, but it is. And that's obviously interesting to know. So if I zoom in, before we look at the code, I'll show you visually what's happening. The green line is the start of the date period. The red line is the end of the date period. And I'm stuck with Christmas colors because this is a Christmas video. Um, and this green line is the opening price of that date period. And this gray line is joining the prices we're analyzing. So the start of the date period begins with the opening price and ends with the closing price. And so if I zoom out and have a look at a few of these, you can see if I measure from that green line to the closing price, uh, we should get this number here. So it's a simple script, but it was actually a little bit tricky to get this to work because if I was just analyzing one date range, that's really easy. I can just put in a date input and we can just check if the bar falls within that date. Um, the problem is the way PineScript works um, it's a little bit trickier to do date window analysis where we don't care about the year. So in this case, I want to analyze a month or time period regardless of what year this, uh, this time period falls in. And so I had to get a little creative here with my script. So let's have a look at the code. Um, as always, the source code to this will be below the video in the pinned comment and video description. And while I'm here, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to learn more PineScript and more trading uh, techniques. I like to pass on everything I'm learning and I learned a lot this year. So next year will be very interesting for the channel, I believe. So make sure to hit subscribe. It'd be great to crack 100k by the end of the year. I don't think that'll happen, but uh, I'm very, very appreciative and grateful for you guys joining our little community here. Anyway, let's have a look at the code. So I'm getting the inputs. We're just getting a start month, end month, start day, end day. Um, obviously, one sort of limitation with this approach, which I haven't thought of a solution to yet, but maybe at some point next year I will uh, think of a solution. But the problem we have here is I can't, for example, check the 1st of December and the 31st of next year's January uh, because of the way we check. Well, this date period needs to be in the same year. So we can only really check December 1st to 31st. We can't go into next year checking into January. It'd be really cool to see how markets perform from the 1st of December to the end of January. 
uh, but unfortunately we can only check december or january or we can check you know like first of june to like first of june to, to the end of december that will work i'm um, sorry i was editing the wrong things here so i can't do um december to january but i could do uh june to december for example uh, because that's in the same year uh, you can see there's a pretty good chance over that six month period to have a positive return not a big surprise since the stock market always tends to trend upwards if we go to a currency uh, we're going to get all kinds of different um, stats here so let's go back to nasdaq and have a look at the code so the way i decided to go about this is to combine the month and day into a single composite value for com for comparison so by multiplying the month by 100 that allows us to um, check values like March 15th and April 10th as 315 and 410. So the month becomes a hundred multiplier. Um, and that ensures the dates are compared sequentially. So the order of days and month is respected. Um, so that's how I went about that. We have these tracking variables. Um, we have the draw label Boolean. This will be flicked to true when it's time to draw the label. And in fact, I don't need that. I'm not really sure why I have that there. Let's get rid of that. That must have been from an old version of the scripts. I'll paste that label code there and that should still work fine. And, and it does. So I can get rid of that Boolean, clean up our script a little bit. So we have the debug ROC rate of change. That's this number here um, that gets displayed on my chart. Um, and to be honest, we really don't need this either. So let me get rid of that as well. Let's clean up this script a little bit. Um, change that to say just ROC and paste them in there. We get rid of another variable that is redundant. There we go, still works. So what we really need to track is the starting bar index. The only reason we need to track that is to draw our gray line here. If I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't need to track the start index the bar index and our starting price, the green line there, so that we can get the rate of change over that time period. So we need to track those two variables. Um, then I have some help of Boolean variables here to make the script easier to read. In window means in time window or date window. Is start time will only be true on the very first bar that enters our time window and is end time will only be true on the first bar that falls outside of our time window. Uh, one sec, I need to let my cat out of the room. He's decided he wants to leave. I guess he finds this boring. Uh, anyway, next we have an array. So the array is not really necessary. I could have achieved this without an array, but I like to use arrays for this sort of thing because it gives us access to the inbuilt functions. Um, so this average value here is just using the arrays inbuilt average function. And that does all the math for me. I don't have to mess around with for loops and stuff like that to get that. We could also get the standard deviation over that time period um, you know there's a lot of different functions in the array class or library that we can use to analyze the data we put into it so I find that kind of helpful that's why I like to use arrays for this sort of thing so when we detect the um, start time so I could probably change this to that yeah make it a little bit more readable let's change this to when this is the first bar in our time window, we save the opening price and we save the bar index to these two variables. And then when we exit our time window, that's where the magic happens, where we analyze what we want to analyze. Obviously we could analyze anything in this time period. We could analyze green bars versus red bars, volume, indicator values. I just stuck with rate of change on the um, price value because I just think that's the most generally useful information when we're analyzing something like this on a market. Um, so yeah, we calculate the rate of change, which is just a simple formula. It's a percentage. So we're getting the price percentage change um, over that time period. Remember that is end time will only be true on the first bar outside of our time window. So when we're analyzing price, we need to use the historical operator to, to reference the bar before. So technically is end time is not true until the 2nd of January here. So I need to shift everything back one bar when I'm doing my analysis. So that's what I do here. We calculate the rate of change. We push it into our array. I draw a line with the values we saved when the time window began. We reset our starting price to NA so that the script can detect when the next time window begins is start time will only be true when starting price is NA or not a number. So we need to reset that. And we draw our label here that 
just displays the rate of change over that time period. And then finally, we have our display table. So to create a table, we use the table.new. We tell it where we want it and we pass in the column number and row number and some color. I could have made these more interesting colors, I guess, but who really cares? So we check, is this the last bar on our chart? And do we actually have something to analyze? If our array size is greater than zero, that means we've completed at least one time window and we can start analyzing the array. So to set a table cell, we use the cell function on the table. We pass in the um, column and the row. So for this, we pass in the average return. We have the number of years that we're analyzing, which is just the size of our array. And then we have the average of that array. And then this little block of code here calculates our percentage chance of a gain. So this number is just the percentage chance of that time period ending positively, just greater than zero. So that gives us even more insight into how price action performs over these seasonality time windows. Um, because if we had one month that had a gigantic return, that will obviously skew our average and give us the wrong idea. This way, we actually know that there's a pretty robust chance of um, this month being positive. So the Santa rally appears to be real, at least on the NASDAQ. Let's have a look at SPY. Oh, it's even more positive on SPY. Um, this is a pretty small average return, but a very high chance of it happening. Uh, I don't think it'll be happening this year, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. I guess we're all getting coal for Christmas out of SPY. But whatever, you know, we've all heard of seasonality in the markets. This is a good way to objectively analyze these time periods. Um, for example, we could see how the first quarter typically plays out. So there we have a three month period. Um, you can see that there's a pretty good chance of the first quarter of the year being a positive return on the S&P 500. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys had a fantastic year. I hope your trading went well. I hope I was able to play any small part in helping you guys become better traders and better coders and scripters and market analysts. Not that I'm an expert in that field, but um, I like to pass on what I have learned from the mentors I have. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video help towards that end. As always, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stick around for next year. Join my mailing list if you want to um, see my end of year breakdown where I'll share what I learned this year and how my trading went. And I'll speak with you next year, guys. Uh, have a fantastic New Year's. Be safe, be good. I'll speak to you next time. Take care.